Okay, welcome you guys. Hello, hello, Heather Powers here. Um, we're going to be doing the vintage unboxing in just a minute for or the um, month of April. If you're new here, say hello. I'd love to hear from you guys. So, hi, Wendy. All right, we're just going to do the desk today. No face. Oh, you don't need to see my very tired face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we have Just May Lincoln today is sponsoring the video. This is where you're going to find the um, the Vintage VIP subscription box. It is a monthly curated collection from Jess, who's the former um, educational director at Vintage, and she comes up with a really, really great uh, collection every month. This year, everything's inspired by the seasons and I absolutely love creating um, according to the seasons. So this is right up my alley. All right, let me say hi to you guys because I just love hearing all your comments. Thank you so much for joining me. I just, I, I can't tell you how much you guys make my day. So hi, Barbara and Terry and happy belated birthday, jo Joellen. That is fantastic. And Candy, Darlene and Dawn watching over on YouTube and um, a present to yourself. I'm really glad, Jonalyn. Jonalyn. I, I forgot how to say your name. Oh, I'm really, <laughs> really bad at it, guys. Okay, hi, Kelly and Laura and Melissa and Cassandra and Trish from Rustic River Finds. One of both Beads to Live By and Rustic River Finds are two fantastic local bead stores that you guys can shop with online and I highly recommend both of them so shout out to you too and we have Monica and M watching from New Zealand good morning <laughs> and hi Janet all right guys so let's jump into the box again it's from JessMayLincoln.com and um I'm not sure if Jess is here yet so when Jess gets here she can share the links for the subscription box. It is, and Jess has sent this box to me. This is a sponsored video. So uh, she gives me this box every month and then I get to open it, show you what's inside and create something fun. So the box is $39.95 and it includes $150 worth of goodies and it is just a fabulous little gift to give yourself every single month. Jess has included the link in the uh, comments there guys if you want to jump ahead and if you don't already subscribe to the box let me know guys are you are you a subscriber? Leave in the comments let's shout out to the subscribers who's a sus subscriber? So I have no idea what's in this box I wait every month to open it. There is a um, coupon for Vintage Salvage on the top of the box, which is Jess's online Etsy shop where you can find um, one of a kind, well, not one of a kind, but close out vintage items on her shop. And so lots of really great unique pieces. Raise your hand. There we go, Jess. That's the way to do it. <laughs> okay, so we have all sorts of goodies in here. I'm going to pull these all out and then make sure I got everything. What I really love is Jess's inspiration cards every month. So she shares, um, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six projects that she made from the goodies in the box. And she always adds lots of fun little um techniques and ideas on here so study this little card it is worth um it's weight in gold as far as inspiration goes all right so we have so many people saying yes candy you've been a subscriber from the beginning isn't it so much fun um yeah i i've just it's really a gift a gift to myself not only to um you know, that you physically get this, but I give the gift of myself of time to create. And so it's really important to me to take that time. This box comes in and I'm like, okay, I get to play on this day. So give yourself that permission too. Lori, this is your third box. Yay. All right. So let's 
jump in and see what's in here. We have um, a little extra sponsorship inside the box from Rustic River Finds. Uh, Trish has sent us along some little cute purple seed beads. Love working with little seed beads added with wire to my creations or head pins. And there's a coupon on the back of this, so don't lose that card. Okay, I'm going to jump in right here with the Green Girl Studio piece. Love the Green Girl Studio. And this month we have a bead that's a tree, and it says strong, grow strong on the sides, and then a little leaf. So, um... I love a little bead that's a little piece of poetry, <laughs> and Green Girl Studios definitely fits that um, subscription. So this is a pewter piece, and let's see what's in the brass collection here. See, we have two blank rings, brass rings, super fun to hammer and texture. Then we have some deco rivets. And these you can um, you can punch holes and wrap them around things, or you can turn these and make them into little bales. So those are fun to play with. Then we have a interesting little abstract. I think it's abstract design. Is it a picture of something and I'm just not seeing it, or is it an abstract design, Jess? It looks a little bit like fish in water, but it could also be a little... Um, things growing from the ground, little plants, or it could just be abstract. <laughs> Hi, Emily. Thanks for joining us. Okay, we have a little teeny tiny piece um, charm. Cutie. And then we have a stamped, well, this is a cast piece that um, someone stamped first, and it says, I am brave. So I like that. Um, I think I might make something for that for my mom who's going through treatment for cancer and so what a great little piece to give to someone who needs to know they're brave. Here's a blank charm and this you can stamp something in the middle or you could color it, um, you could do texture, you could stamp a little um, initials or a little XO. <laughs> Love! Yeah, Jess. Okay, so it's not necessarily something, but it both reminds me of, and Jess, of things growing from the ground. So I like that. Rooted, right? <laughs> oh, this is an interesting piece. Um, there's no holes in it, so you can either punch holes or wrap it around. Let's see. Um, I don't see where Jess used it, but I would definitely probably wrap it around something. Okay, and then we have a bird. And the bird also doesn't have holes, so you can either punch it, or it looks like Jess had wrapped the ring wings. <laughs> that was really hard for me to say, guys. Wings around a component. <laughs> All right, now we have this big bag full of goodies, so let's see what's in here. And every month Jess puts together a, um, oh, I'm reading all the things. Uh, Jess said she made a bracelet with that long piece, but it isn't on the card, so she'll be sharing that online soon. Okay, now here's pieces from, um, this is the kind of stuff you'll see at Jess's vintage um, salvage Etsy shop. And so here we have some more deco rivets. We have two large pendants, and these are always fun to paint. Or you can just um, use your buffing block and raise some of that design that's on the metal, because it's silver um, metal underneath, under this um, darkened black art metal finish. And here's some flowers. Mm, loving those. Oh, here's another deco rivet. Oh, wow. Okay, another thing about the boxes is that a lot of times you're going to find things that um, are just 
one of a kind, not one of a kinds, but just special for the box. So you're not going to find them anywhere except in the box. I mean, maybe you can find them somewhere if you're a, a bead hunter. <laughs> but Jess has put some really special um, items for us in the box that you're not going to find anywhere else easily. So I absolutely love the um, handcrafted feel of this, even though it's you know, um, a cast piece. It's really beautiful. In fact, I'll probably make something with this because I love it so much. Okay, so here is a little tiny deco rivet. And we have a girl on the moon. This little, uh, you know, Art Nouveau kind of style. Then we have some leather to play with. And then Jess's beautiful collection of check glass and crystal. Okay, and I love this like spring rain kind of feel. So Jess, what would you say was your inspiration for the box? Tell us, tell us what you were thinking. Was it spring rain? Was it growing? April showers bring May flowers. <laughs> what was your inspiration for the box? I'd love to hear. Okay, so I'm going to start thinking about things. I'm going to pull out some humble beads that will work with this box. So I'm liking the purple direction. I'm liking the blue. I'm going to pull out some purples. This one's a little bit different color. I like that guy. And what else do I have? Kind of. Oh. I think that would work too. This light, light blue, purple. Oh, here's Periwinkle. Ooh, periwinkle would look pretty with something. Okay, so that's where I'm going to stand here with my collection of humble beads that may or may not work out for a design. We'll have to see. But these are definitely ones I would pull out as possibilities. All right, so spring rain, April showers, bring May flowers vibe. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was reading it right. I'm so glad to hear that. All right. So what's the first thing that catches your guys' eye? What would you grab to start out with? I'm thinking I really love this pendant, and that might be what I start with. But let me hear from you. Oh, I also have this little key charm, too. Well, is it a key or a button? I guess it's a button. Either way, that will be fun to play with. Probably goes this way. Duh. Such a dork sometimes. A little button. That would be super cute for um, a clasp. All right. So what piece grabs your attention? What would you go with first? I am thinking, um, let's see. I definitely love this thing right here. Whatever it is, it's, uh, Caught my attention. Okay, Jess says that you can guess the May box will be more earthy and flower. Because, you know, what else would spring rain bring, right? <laughs> the pendant. This, this one, Laura, is that the one you would go for? I'm really loving that. The fish looking one. Yes, the one that has that kind of abstract... Um, art design. That's fun, too. Okay, I'm definitely I'm thinking I'm just going to go for this. I'm not going to overthink it too much. And so that means I'm going to set aside a few of the other pendants that I know I'm not going to use. Normally you like the moon. Isn't that moon pretty? I would think I think I want to paint this. So I'm going to save that. Remember, um, next week I'll be showing what I do with the rest of the elements. So if I don't get to something this week, I'll be 
using it for a design next week. Might use something with that. And maybe that, but I'm not 100% sure. And these I'm going to save for earrings. Because I think those will look fabulous for earrings. Okay. <laughs> I am thinking, you guys. <laughs> the fish one reminds you of mermaids. Yes. And then Dawn, you like the grow strong bead. Me too. Okay. Kind of, you know, I like a long stack of things. <laughs> I can't help myself. And so I might just do a crazy long stack of uh, different elements here. I have to think it through for a minute. And you love the lavender and periwinkle colors together. Yes. It's definitely, I'm loving this color combination. Uh, I'm not sure I want to use that yet. I do like the silver um, roller bead. It's a check glass bead, but it looks like silver metal. I think that might have to go in here somewhere. All right, so... Just thinking of what I want to do here. Thinking I want to have this not covered up at all. I really like the design. Okay. Beads are done. <laughs> Hi, Roxy. So, um, just trying to figure out what I want to do with all of the goodies that are here. I kind of like the idea of using this little deco rivet in between. And, uh, I would really like to do something with the bird, but I'm not quite sure just yet how I want to do that. Like, moving it around, hoping that if I dance with it, it'll come up with something. <laughs> Okay, for sure I'm going to use the uh, periwinkle beads. And so I'm going to grab one of those to put on the bottom here. And let's see, do I want to have this bird? I really don't think I want to cover that up at all. Maybe I'll just make a simple pendant keep it easy and simple and then do a pair of earrings along with it too. Like I don't have to always reinvent the entire wheel. Okay. So I feel like a bird would be fun, but I kind of want to leave this more subdued and simple. So maybe I'll put a little wobble on here too. And the wobbles in the disc bead are polymer clay beads from me, uh, from humblebeads.com. Okay, grabbing some tools here. Okay, so I'm going to take this deco rivet and fold it over to make a loop. Well, roll it over. So you can see there's... Oop, let me get that. There we go. So I've made a loop with it. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side. And I think I'm going to use jump rings to attach everything. I don't want to necessarily use the rivet to do the attaching because I want it to have a little bit more movement on the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna grab a, I'm gonna grab a jump ring that's gonna hold it that way. And now let me grab my box of jump rings. And let's see, I have 
in my stash. And I don't know if this is something you guys... I know this came from Vintage Salvage at one time, but I don't think you guys have any more. But I'm just going to grab one and use it on the bottom here. Do I want to do that? Maybe not. Yeah, I'm going to go with my old uh, 17 millimeter. Throw in a little brass in there to mix up the color a little bit. So this is just going to be a very long, skinny pendant. And I'm cool with that. So I'm going to grab some little beads that I'm going to put on the top. Too blue. Just trying to figure out what I want to do here. Okay, let me put the let me construct the bottom part together, and then I'll decide what I want to do on the top. I'm going to grab some 18 gauge wire. Actually, you know what? I'm going to grab my twisted wire because I think that'll be a fun texture. So 18 gauge twisted wire. And I'm going to take, oh, I'm going to take about eight inches. I might do something. Maybe I'll do 10 inches. I'm going to do something creative on the top, I think. That's the plan anyways. We'll see if it happens. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take my little jump ring here. I don't know where my other pliers are, so we're just going to use the chunky parallel pliers. Some things have walked away today. As always. Okay, I'm going to grab this 17 millimeter jump ring and attach that to the bottom here and my deco rivet, the little loop that I made. And I may, oh, no, that's going to fit on there. Perfect. Okay, cool. There we go for the bottom. And now... I'm going to take and do a wrapped loop, but I'm going to keep the wrap very um, simple. Well, that didn't make sense. I'm going to keep the wrap just to two, two turns. That's what I want to say. And um, my flush cutters are out in the other room, so I'm going to have to make do. We were cutting wire for kits the other day, and they didn't quite get me uh, put back into my room. Oh, that's a good idea. Don said we could use the bird, put holes in the wings for multiple bead dangles. That would be a really cool idea, Don. I love that. And hi, those that are just joining. And <laughs> Bonnie said she feels like she has to paint her nails. Bonnie, I only painted my nails because um, because they were stained with ink. I had filled up a little uh, ink bottle. I mean, uh, sorry, reaching for something. I'd filled up one of my pens this morning and stained my fingers with ink like uh <laughs> like Joe from Little Women <laughs> oh, I love fountain pens that's one of my little hobbies well hello Leanne from the Hill Country I lived in San Antonio for 10 years so we would 
run around over there often. Okay, yep, I'm loving this, guys. Okay, I'm gonna put this little roller on the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'm, oh no, that's gonna be too, too small. I might put another, I had thrown on one of these little O beads that you can get at um, Trisha's shop and you can use the coupon that Trish has on the back of her little item that she donated. Okay, yeah, I like just a little, little tiny dash of color between those two beads. Okay, now I want to do something a little bit more creative with the top here. So I think I'm going to pull out, like, I want to make a big loop. So I think I'm going to pull out my Sharpie and make a big loop around my Sharpie. Because, you know, sometimes that's the way it goes. <laughs> So I have a nice big loop for the top here, and that way I won't have to use a jump ring on the top since I have that shape here with the uh, ginormous uh, wrapped loop. Okay, and I'm going to keep the wrapped loop simple, just wrapping two times. I'm gonna wait and I need to trim that closer so I need to wait and get my pliers from the other room before I do anything with that okay I did mess this up a little I need to have these both going in the same direction so I'm just gonna use my fingers and turn it okay and now I'm gonna open this up my pendant on and pinch it back closed. There we go. I love it. Now, let's see. You know what? I, I think I would really just do it with leather cord. Um, it's getting a little bit warmer. I like to... Uh, wear leather more um, cord in the summer or when it gets warmer not that it's warm right now I guess I'm warm <laughs> okay so I'm going to stick this through I'm going to take this little loop and hold it like this I'm going to take my two lines and put them straight above and I'm going to take the left cord and I'm going to pull it um, from the back. I'm going to go using the left cord. I'm going to pull up through the right hole and I'm going to do the opposite on this side. I'm going to take the right cord and pull it through up through the left hole and I'm going to pull this knot down and this is called a cat's paw knot. And it's, uh, it's a really nice little decorative way to add leather to your pendant. So, cat's paw knot. Yeah. I This, I'm actually wearing purple today. I would throw this on right now and wear this. I might add just a few little sparkly dangles to the bottom here. I think we should do that. Add a few little bits of sparkle. I think it needs it. Okay, so I'm going to use some teeny tiny jump rings and two small head pins. And again, excuse my reach as I dig around for things. Okay. I'm going to use two one inch head pins for the little tiny crystals that are going to go in the middle here. And 
And I'm going to grab my one-step looper pliers for this. So you got your one-step loopers. These are from Vintage. Uh, it's a 1.5 millimeter um, loop that it makes, and you just put your wire in there and pinch it, and it gives you a nice little formed loop. And I'm going to make it just a tiny bit bigger. Okay, now I'm going to repeat. So I've just reshaped the loop just a tiny bit, uh, just to make it a little bit bigger so it will fit on. And I'm going to use some small jump rings. So these are very thin um, size, five millimeter jump rings is what we have here. <laughs> well, Kelly, please apologize to your dog for me and um, let him know we can call it a, a dog's paw if he really wants it to be a dog's paw. And Laura, this is how I'm going to finish the back. I'll do this really quick. Well, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take the two ends and um, put them next to each other. And I have about... If this is the center, I have about, uh, well, let's do a little bit more. I'm going to have about five to six inches of wire crossing over on each side. I'm going to take this and make a loop. So this is my end of my piece I'm taking and making a loop. And I'm going to take that piece of leather that's making the loop and wrap it around all three of the um, pieces, so the two parts of the loop and the piece that you crossed over. And stick your little end through and you're going to push down on your knot and pull on this little end piece of leather. And I'm going to repeat this on the other side. And this is going to be an adjustable knot. And you want to make your loop in the same across from each other so that, it, <laughs> so that it lines up right. So I'm going to take this, I've made my loop, I'm going to wrap my end of my cord around three times and then pull it up through. Then pull, uh, pulling this down and pushing my little knot and I scissors are also on the other side of the table so I'm just going to trim this off a little bit and then cut it more with my scissors. So this is your adjustable knot. You pull on the cord to make your necklace longer and you pull down on the knots to make it shorter. So that's that's my favorite way to do this. Okay, let me finish adding these little tiny charms on here. I'm gonna open up and close these little jump rings. So these are skinny little five millimeter jump rings. I don't have a source for them. Uh, you can find them at the craft store sometimes or on Amazon or check out your local bead store. But they do need to be skinny to be able to fit through your bead holes. Okay, I'm going to close that up. All the way. There we go. And I'm going to do the same for the little forget-me-not that's on here. This little tiny flower spacer. I'm also going to attach that with a jump ring. Okay, and now close this up. 
And I'm going to repeat with the other two so that I can just open up my jump ring and slide everything on at once. Might have to redo those little crystals. They might be a little too uh, small of a loop on them. In fact, I'm just going to save those two that I did for a pair of earrings or something and remake them. Oh no, I dropped that little bead. Once something hits my floor, it's gone forever. My floor is the Bermuda Triangle. When we finally get to rip up this carpet, I'm going to have like a, a whole little dustpan full of just beads that have fallen on the carpet and I can never find it again. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to redo those two little guys. Yes, Jess, thanks for letting people know that. You can still order this April Inspiration box until the end of the month. So you have a week left to get this box. And then after um, April, then the May box will be sent out. And so um, it's really fun to get a gift every month. And there's no, um, there's no set amount you can do it for as many months as you want. And I don't know what I'm thinking with that gigantic loop. Let's pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> okay. Again, too big overestimating my wire here. Okay. And I kind of bent it. All right. There we go. And I'm going to open this up. I'm going to take off the uh, charm there and throw on my forget-me-not my little glass um, fire polish bead and then the little tiny drop and I'm going to throw on my pendant then repeat the pattern on the other side oh, and sometimes just a little tiny bit of extra color and texture is all you needed Okay. Oh yeah, I'm loving it. Okay. And I'm just going to stick my deco rivet above the, uh, where that jump ring opens and closes. So yes, we'll have just a little bit of color and sparkle. And then we have, um, my two polymer clay beads, the Green Girl Studio bead, and I think I like the leaf, but you could also twist it around and do the tree. Um, it's on here a little loose because I haven't tightened up the top yet because I need to get my pliers, I mean my cutters. But um, if you left it loose, you could have it kind of like a little worry bead that you twist around. <laughs> oh. My mom likes to say that um, any beads on the floor are hers, so sometimes she comes over and sees what goodies she can scoop up. <laughs> Alright, guys, this is so me. I'm totally going to wear this today. I love it. Let's, uh, let's whip up a pair of earrings to match it really, really quick. these uh, a 
little raindrops underneath the flowers. And I'm going to grab these little check glass that kind of look like little eggs. So that's going to be what I have on the top. And I know I have some eye pens here. Just going to use eye pens and keep this super easy. I'm going to use brass findings so that everything kind of ties in with my little um, jump ring that I got going on. And I'm going to grab two little pearl head pins. And this will help me do a bigger loop on the bottom. Bonnie, thanks for asking. My mom is doing pretty good. Um, she finished her chemo and radiation and now for the next year she'll be doing um oh, what do you call it uh, lost my train of thought what is it called uh, oh immunotherapy where they teach your body how to fight cancer cells like a virus so she'll do that for a whole year and she's just plugging along Okay, I'm going to add a little eight, I mean a size 11 seed bead on the bottom here because my, um, my head pin has a very tiny bottom and the bead just slipped through. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to do a large hole on the loop on the top here. And before I do the wrap on the loop, I'm going to open it up and stick it through on the bottom and this design idea is coming directly from Jess's little playbook on her uh, inspiration page that she has up there. I want to make sure that has enough room to move around. Okay. Now I'm going to just do a really messy, thick wrap with the rest of this wire. Kind of out of focus there, but I just wrapped it around with my fingers. Oh, might be a little too small. Oh, how could I do that? Well, very easily. Okay, I'm going to take that off. Alright, and maybe I'll do a little loop. I'll use these jump rings, the oval ones, then I don't have to worry about the size of the loops. Okay, throw in this little tiny bead on, Boop. then this really fun little raindrop looking bead. I'm gonna make a wrapped loop on the top here. I don't have to worry about the size of the loop so I can keep it kind of on the small side and now I'm going to do a messy wrap. I did um, two to three wraps tightly first and then using the rest of the wire on top. Now I'm going to open up the jump ring and throw that on, and then we're going to just do the top very simply. Now you could paint this if you wanted. You could texture it with a hammer. I'm, I'm kind of liking how it's looking right now, so I'm just going to leave the metal piece as is. 
Or you could pull out that one moonstone and do a little moonstone on it if you wanted it to have kind of that uh, opalish glow to it. Or finish, not really a glow, but... There we go. Alright, now on the top, super simple, I'm going to do... my little bead and I need a spacer so let me see I like to put metal between the two glass pieces so I think I'm gonna grab two of my favorite little flower spacers the little leaves and then throw on the purple one And this is going to be going front to, I mean, left to right, so that I can put my jump ring on the top. I mean, not jump ring, ear wire. Oh, these are really long. Long and fun. And I think I have some silvery ear wires. might be more work than I can do to find them, so we'll just have to pretend an ear wire's on here. <laughs> there we go. And um, that would be the earring that I would wear with it. So a long skinny earring to go with my long skinny pendant. Now I just need to find my silver ear wires, and I might throw a roller bead on top of this leather just to add a little bit. <laughs> Thanks for the well wishes for my mom, you guys. Um, the flower spacers, Kelly, if they're not on my website right now, they will be on there um, tomorrow. We'll be adding a bunch of things to the website tomorrow. And I um, have a ton of those little bead caps to put back on. All right, so that's it, you guys. We got a necklace and a pair of earrings in this beautiful little spring rain collection with uh, my little worry bead here on the top. I'm just going to leave it loose because I'm just going to play with it all the time. <laughs> all right, guys. So next week I am going to, um, oh wait, I wanted to say, uh, Emily had a great idea with, uh, doing the, uh, stocking over the hose on your vacuum and um, doing it that way. Yeah, I should definitely do that. <laughs> oh, all the buckets of beads that are on the floor in here, right? All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this week is the Great Bead Extravaganza. I will be teaching how to make this necklace design on Sunday at 1 p.m., We'll have the schedules out already. You can go to the Great Bead Extravaganza page or the group to see the schedule for the weekend. We have 12 designers, and I will be teaching this on Sunday. So don't miss that. Uh, let me put up Just Me Lincoln again is where you're going to find the subscription kit. You guys can get it. You can subscribe um, until the end of the month to get this April kit. Next Thursday, I'm going to have the vintage play date where I show you guys what I do with the rest of the components and I'll make as many things as I can in an hour. I give myself, of course, more time to play around and pick things out before then. All right, guys. So again, like I said, this weekend, great beat extravaganza. Your kits are out. I have a few that we're just sending out today. Um, the last little ones that ordered later. So, you know, it's better to watch my videos first and then make the project because I'm really good at making mistakes. 
it. So if you watch the video first and then you'll have your kit um, to work on it later, that would be ideal instead of trying to follow along because I'm really great at showing you guys how not to do something. But um, I have an email I'm sending out to you guys about that. So you'll get an email. If you haven't subscribed to my web site email, head over to humblebeads.com and sign up for that. I will have my specials for this week for the Great Bead Extravaganza in there, along with the update of the other crazy thing I've been doing, which is the Bead of the Day. I'm just going to show you guys today's Bead of the Day. Well, this was actually yesterday's, but I fell asleep <laughs> at night. So I've changed the time of the Bead of the Day to 4.30 every day. And so these will be up on the website with some disc beads today at 4.30. And um, are these sweet little daffodils? These are taken from a wax seal that I have and uh, stamped them on and hand painted each one for you guys. So the bead of the day is every day. It's something different every day. It's whatever I feel inspired to do. So some days it's um, a focal bead or something different like these charms or birds or disc beads you just never know what it's gonna be <laughs> so just something fun and different and I do these in really small batches you guys so if you want one you're gonna have to be there right at 4 30 and um, things that are really popular and that you guys tell me you really love I will make more of them and I know I'll be making more of these I think I have 15 pairs of them so they'll sell out quickly and then I'll make more um, for this weekend. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Jess, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video and sending us this awesome box to play with. Trish, thank you for the coupon and the little seed beads that are in our kit. Looking forward to playing with those. And I will see you guys on Sunday. And then I will see you next week on um, Thursday again for the vintage play date and see what I do.